Sean's doctor advised him to absolutely not do the carnival diet. So Sean, here's what I want you to do. If you go to, back to your doctor, ask him to please provide the proof, the scientific proof of what he told you that he based his facts on and ask him to sign on a piece of paper that the medicine that he will give you in a couple of years time when you have high blood pressure and high uric acid will absolutely resolve your problem. And of course, you won't be able to, to, do, to produce either the proof that, it, uh, that is based, uh, that is um, claim and recommendation that the carnivore diet is not good for hypertension or uh, gout. It's, um, there's no scientific proof of that. If your doctor tells you you should not do the carnivore diet uh, because you have, you have less than 30% kidney function left, then you should not do the carnivore diet. But if you have more than 30% kidney function left, you can do the carnivore diet if it's your choice. The carnivore diet, which I always suggest, you'll see in every video I suggest that you talk to your doctor about it. So thanks, Sean, for, for talking to your doctor. I do appreciate it. Um, because if you are on medication, your doctor needs to um, reduce your medicine as you will be lowering your insulin resistance and hypertension and uric acid, <laughs> so, um, and glucose, of course. Um, but so, um, yeah, so where does it come from? As I explained in other videos on my Frequently Asked Question playlist, how hypertension works and how um, gout works. I'll do it at the end of this video, but I just want to talk about the balanced part of this diet. So what is a balanced diet? That is the next thing you should ask your doctor. Tell me what is a balanced diet. Where do you get that information from? Why do you call it a balanced diet? And here's the thing, uh, Sean. Balanced diet was an invention of about 70 years ago. <laughs> it's quite a new thing. Um, so the proper human diet, other than the balanced diet that was invented about 70 years ago, the, the proper human diet is animal-based products. You know, I always say that if the fridges go down and all the uh, ships break and all the trucks break, we will go back to being uh, hunters and farmers with animals. Mostly, we'll try to plant something, but we'll struggle because we won't have insecticides that is produced in a factory. So the hojas will eat all, all, the, all the millies and all the things that we are trying to plant, or most of it. And, and we will be eating seasonal, by the way. So balanced. There you go, balanced. Um, what is balanced if there are no fridges? To, to give you 365 days availability of balanced fruit and vegetables, which wouldn't have been possible 150 years ago. It wouldn't have been possible. We did not eat that way. So your doctor is quite against Professor Tim Noakes, who has three doctor's degrees, who is a uh, sports scientist and very highly edu uh, educated uh, in uh, how the body works. So what your doctor is telling you is what he learned. And he, what he learned, he just repeat to you. He's not allowed to repeat anything else because he does not know anything else and he refused to learn anything else more. So Professor Tim Noakes, who he, your doctor shoots down, said something very incredible. He said, a scientist who discovered that he's wrong and he does not correct his ways is not a true scientist. So my recommendation to you is look for another doctor because here's the point. That's the third thing you need to discuss with your doctor. If he's willing to cover your medical bills when you are having heart problems 10 years from now because you did not change your lifestyle um, in regards to what you eat. So, like I always say in many of my videos, they've done actually risk factor, real scientific proof of what causes heart disease. And you must ask your doctor about that. Um, what about type 2 diabetes? Am I pre-diabetic? Because diabetes has a 10.7 risk factor. As you know, you've heard my videos. Um, they did a study with 28,000 women over a 10-year period. And they discovered that type 2 diabetes has, or diabetes in general, has a 
a 10.7 risk factor for heart disease. Um, metabolic syndrome, measurement around the belly, high triglycerides, high potential, um, high glucose levels. Um, as all that together is called metabolic syndrome as a 6.0 risk factor. So if the belly is too big. Um, then hypertension itself, 4.5 risk factor. Um, you know, high triglycerides, the lipid component in the blood that goes up when you eat too many um, uh, carbohydrates. So that balanced diet that your doctor talks about, if you eat too much of the carbohydrates, um, then uh, you will you have high triglycerides. You have high lipid content in triglycerides in your blood, which has a 2.1 risk factor. Now, the carnivore diet, which your doctor does not want to, you to do, does have a risk factor, absolutely. Um, the, that risk factor is your LDL, your bad cholesterol, will go up slightly. It's got a 1.6 risk factor, according to this Women's Health Initiative study that was done over a 10-year period for determining risks for heart disease. So there is a risk factor, absolutely, if you eat fatty red meat, 1.6 risk, risk factor. So here's what's going to happen if you do the carnivore diet. Your HDL, your good cholesterol, which is so important, and you should also discuss it with your doctor, how he's going to help you to raise your HDL. Because you can't really raise your HDL if you eat in a balanced type of diet way. Because it, you, you will not do it properly. Because if the balanced diet worked, Sean, then why are people visiting their doctors on this Western type balanced diet? My plate, food pyramid, eat very little meat, a lot of fruit and vegetables. If that worked... Why do we have hypertension? Why do we have obesity? Why do we have sugar diabetes? All those things, the top things, the diabetes, the um, insulin resistance, the hypertension, uh, the obesity, which has a 3.9 risk factor for heart disease. Um, all those things we are reversing and the high triglycerides, we are reversing with the carnivore diet. So, so it's about risk. Um, so, but your, your choice, yeah, you, you listen to which doctor, whichever you want. I've got six doctors, go and listen to them. It's on my blog <laughs> and they are eating, um, in the way that I'm eating. I'm on the carnivore diet. I'm actually on the lion diet. So on the carnivore diet and on the lion diet, you can expect to get a higher HDL and lower triglycerides. That is called insulin sensitivity and if you go on a balanced diet and you eat too much carbohydrates and you eat unsaturated seed oil, which we don't on the carnivore diet, you can have high triglycerides and you can have a low HDL. And that is called insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance, Sean, upregulates your uric acid retention on your kidneys as well as it upregulates your salt retention on your kidneys. And now you have high uric acid levels and you have hypertension later on. Why? Not because of the meat, but because of the balanced diet that you, you ate too much carbohydrates, you, you ate too much unsaturated seed, well, a lot of sugar, all those things. And you become insulin resistance and insulin makes you fat. And insulin resistance is the cause of 90% of, of 99%, I would say, of problems in the human body. So um, it upregulates the aldosterone hormone that regulates uh, salt retention in the kidneys. And there's your problem, hypertension. We reverse hypertension, Sean. I reverse my own hypertension with the carnivore diet. So tell your doctor, I say, send him this video, please do. <laughs> tell him to follow me on my YouTube channel. We're almost on 800. Tell him we are reversing, um, carnivore, uh, we are reversing diabetes with the carnivore diet. We are reversing uh, obesity and insulin resistance and hypertension with the carnivore diet. And yes, we are reversing uh, high uric acid levels as well. So I've got a video on high uric acid levels, what you can expect if you suffer from gout and you struggle with the carnivore diet. Uh, check it out. I'll put a link in the description or mention it. Uh, thanks, Sean, for your commentary. I do appreciate it. Cheers.